The CEOs of Donacle and MRO Drone spoke at MRO Europe this year about the use of drones within MRO. Aviation Week caught up with them to find out more about where the technology is headed and what is still standing in the way of its full potential. It's definitely not going to be a replacement, or at least not anytime soon. Um, when we go and talk to inspectors or operators in maintenance hangars, we tell them your value is really in analysing that data and in producing the damage report. Uh, and you have more value doing that rather than just physically going up onto the aircraft and going and climbing on a cherry picker to access the upper areas. So the drone is there to do that first part and then you'll have more value being on the ground analysing the data and saying this is what I think the software is right about and what it's wrong about and producing those end reports which enable the operators to get the aircraft back into service as quickly as possible. Our headline is it's, it's just another tool. It's another tool in the toolbox. The engineer is going to say highly trained, highly skilled, their knowledge is key. So they have to look at drone technology or other similar, similar te te technology, inspection technology such as 3D scanning systems. They are just an aid to their work, um, reducing the risk of error, reducing any tolerance issues, ultimately making the process more efficient. Having structured data is more important than just having data. So there are multiple technologies which come into that. The first is acquiring the data in a structured way. So we developed autonomous drones, automated drones, which are able to position themselves very precisely in relation to the aircraft. Uh, and they're going to fly repeatable missions on the aircraft structure, which means that any image we acquire, we're going to be able to pinpoint the exact locations in terms of frames or stringers on the aircraft structure and do that at every inspection. So as time goes on, we can look at the same spot of the same aircraft at different points in time. And the second aspect is really developing computer vision algorithms to be able to extract useful information. So when an air, a drone flies around an aircraft, it's going to take anywhere between 500 and 1,000 pictures. Uh, just having those pictures is useful, but it takes a long time to go through them. So we're developing and we've developed tools to be able to extract things like damages, um, zones of interest on the aircraft that are going to then be notified to the inspector that, so that he sifts through a shortened list and doesn't have to go through all the white areas on the aircraft structure. Ultimately you're trying to thin that data out to only produce the data which is necessary to be integrated with the damage reporting system of the airline. So we spent uh, a significant amount of our time making sure that our reporting system is integrating or can integrate with the, uh, the systems that are out there already. It's only when you've got that in place that you can truly make it usable with an aircraft's exist an airline or an OEM's or an MO's existing system. Um, the drone industry as a whole is slowly becoming more cohesive, there is more regulation that's becoming um, shared around the world, but there are still national authorities which have a decision on what goes on. So there are two general families regarding regulations. The first is being able to actually fly the drones. So in most countries now it's uh, authorised to fly drones indoors, even in airport airspace. What's going to be the next challenge on that front is really be able to bring the drone outdoors to line maintenance applications. But currently there's no unified regulations. So every country defines if it allows drones or doesn't, which makes things difficult for the operators. Uh, the, the second aspect is really more on the engineering and certifying side, which is uh, working with Airbus, Boeing, the FAA, EASA, to prove that a drone inspection is at least as good as a human inspection, so not necessarily perfect, but it's going to be at least as efficient and obviously much less time consuming than what a human inspector would do. Uh, and that's, that's close. Uh, Joss, there within about six months, we think uh, we're uh, similar timescales. And that's just really working with the, the regulators or the manufacturers to prove to them that this sort of system can provide at least the equivalence of a human. I think it's definitely um, two aspects. One is certifying the ability for drones to replace or complement general visual inspections that's currently done by human inspectors. So the target is uh, in the next six to 12 months to work with the OEMs and uh, with the regulatory bodies to be able to say a, an image taken by a drone is at least as good as what a human inspector sees with his own eyes. And there's, there's a second aspect which is more on, on the long term which is uh, 
gathering all that data and being able to analyze it and trace it. So airlines are going to have the potential in the future to go back six months, 12 months, 18 months earlier and look at the state of the aircraft at different points in time and track much more precisely which kind of damages were on the aircraft and how they evolved over time. We can start to see where the drone is not just an inspection tool. The drone could start to become something which could be more integrated into the hangar environment. Uh, there are initiatives at the moment, for example, of how a drone can deliver parts through factories. There's no reason why in an MRO environment a drone can do the same thing as well. Uh, the drone, of course, provides a platform for carrying sensors. Uh, AI can come into that mix as well, where you're starting to use that drone in a much more advanced way than you ever have before. Um, we've obviously talked about not replacing the engineer, augmenting his, his interaction with the aircraft. AI takes you a bit further forward with that. It allows you to start doing things in a more automated way. Uh, but I think we are, uh, this is a step-by-step -step process to work with the stakeholders, with the regulators, to show that this technology can be used in that manner.